I remember playing this game called Trolley Problem Inc. It's a game about tough questions, and there was this one question that didn't feel like it fit in with the others, but I truly understand now. Do you go on an unknown journey or take control of your destiny and choose your own outcome, whatever that may be? It seems easy, and I would imagine most people gravitate towards one answer. Through watching Fiona and Cake, I'd see the extreme ends of this through Fiona and Simon, who embody chaos and order respectively. But first, who is Fiona? Fiona has a chaotic life because at the moment she is a chaotic person. If you've heard chaos before, you may be predetermined to think of rebellion in a violent sense. However, that's not exactly what chaos implies. It implies flexibility, individualism, and in some sense, freedom. There's many characters who are chaotic but not necessarily violently rebellious, and Fiona embodies that. We see her wake up to a very messy apartment, hitting the snooze button because she doesn't want to go into work. When putting on clothes, the only system is if it works at the moment. When tending to her cat, she doesn't care about the additional mess of ice cubes or a whole tuna sandwich on the floor. When doing her job as a tour guide, she takes a lot of liberties in how she conducts the tour. Hey, anybody here into dream analysis? Because I've been having this dream about a cool ice prince and giant penguins and stuff. Feels like the universe is trying to tell me something. She's very much in the moment and her own person with no set structure in life, taking each day as it comes. However, this comes with issues as her tour ends in a catastrophe. <laughs> I don't find you funny. Fiona doesn't see beyond her and her own cat's needs. And this is shown when she questions the legitimacy of the tour job in the first place, bumps into people who are not important to her, and disregards Marshall Lee, the musician in the back of the tour bus, when he mentions not being on good terms with his mom, but still wanting him to speak to her about Fiona's rent as she needs more time. Could you let your mom know my rent is going to be late this month? Um, me and her aren't really talking right now. What? But I can barely afford the vet! Nope, not gonna do it. Marshall. The contrast is best shown when it comes to Gary and Fiona's interaction at his job. We see him as very orderly, knowing each recipe in and out and having a 64 step plan to running his own bakery. Interestingly, he does want to express creativity through his order by making his own recipe. And that represents the struggle in his life as he'd be faced with the negatives of said order. His boss, who sticks to tradition in a very brutal way. However, he disagrees with Fiona's outlook on simply quitting his job and doing everything now as that represents a break from the order which he's comfortable with but also represents Fiona's impulsiveness which he explicitly confirmed despite being civil with each other you can see the difference in personality gotta stick to the plan <sighs> plans I never make plans right cake don't you have a vet appointment right now <laughs> so now that you know who Fiona is who is Simon Simon has an orderly life because at the moment he's an orderly person. Whereas chaos is often misconstrued to mean the only most intense variant of it, people typically understand what order is better, whether it be from school, work, or the daily grind of a set life, which Simon has. Contrasted against Fiona's chaotic way of waking up, Simon is early to wake up, beating the alarm clock, and having a set routine in which the cheery, pun intended, opening theme song is set against a very lifeless Simon, gathering what little motivation he has to man the 20th century exhibit. There's a running theme within the episode that he avoids speaking about his Fiona and Cake fanfiction, to which we learn he wrote this back when he was the Ice King years ago, something he'd like to move on from. A young girl presses his past upon him, even alleging that his change had something to do with the woman in his life before. Uh, oh he seems to react the harshest within this episode when it comes to acknowledging his past as while he may be discontent with the mundane routine that he has now, he equally doesn't want to seem to revisit what he had before the present day. An orderly person may stress minimizing uncertainties, embracing the security of a proper routine. However, towards the end of the second episode, Simon decides to revisit his fanfiction. Fiona didn't know what secrets lay in the Crystal City at the bottom of the lake. But she knew there was only one way to find out. You're right, Fiona. He begins to understand that he may not know how each step upon his journey will go, but the only way to find out is just to do it. What journey specifically? We'll get into that in a second. Now that we know both Fiona and Simon, in my creaky chair, 
Now that we both know Fiona and Simon, what do they want? A chaotic person may scoff at the idea of structure and rules, seeing it as a prison, restricting what the future may lie. However, the allure of structure does come with things that someone who relishes too much within chaos may seek. Reliability, a tangible sense of purpose, and a clear vision. A chaotic person, like Fiona, often wants answers to questions. We see that Fiona dreams about becoming a hero, however, she isn't dreaming for more order in her life, but rather she wants both. The balance of a set structure, in this case of morality, good versus evil, combined with the chaotic, day-to-day -day magical action of not knowing what's next. However, through her very loose and erratic life, her cat cake acts as the compass for something grander. We see her share in a similar fantasy, often swimming or wanting to be where it is cold. Fiona interprets this as her being ill, and through Marshall takes her to Ellis, a very eccentric person. However, before she gets to see him, we meet Hunter, who prides himself on destroying wildflowers but also letting them flourish in his own personal sanctuary. Here we see what was once contextualized as unwanted or misplaced now is given the space to bloom however they wish. It's chaos through order. Just close your eyes and blow. <sighs> yep, that about sums it up. Aww. <sighs> Fiona may not see this yet, but this is the hint to the viewer as to what is to come thematically. Each person from Marshall, Gary, Hunter, and now Ellis is shown to have relatively more order and structure in their lives, despite all of them living very different lives. This may seem confusing when looking at someone like Ellis who feeds squirrels and BSs his way through tending animals in need, but even this being his reputation only demonstrates how well his routine is shown to others. Mind you, order doesn't necessarily mean normal. It just means organized. Fiona then begins to project her own emotions onto her cat, and through this we see what she truly wants. Maybe she's sick? Maybe she's not getting enough sleep? Maybe she feels trapped in my crummy little apartment? Maybe it doesn't matter where. What if she's just bored with everything and wishes the world was more magical? It should be more magical. The magical world is the surface to the clear purpose and set structure that she wants. It's just that her structure isn't a 9 to 5 that has a strict sequence of events. Her structure is witnessing more of the magical elements and the unknown. An orderly person may shun the idea of novel experiences that go against the norm and taking risks on things that they don't know all of the variables for. But the allure of chaos comes with things that someone stuck in a rut may seek. The rush of the unknown, the flexibility to tweak their daily life, and simply freedom. Unlike someone who's too chaotic, someone with order has a lot of answers, but simply wants new questions. Like Simon. We see during the beginning of the second episode that Simon remembers a more free, chaotic life that was grounded in taking care of Marceline. He even speaks about this, pondering what life would be like without her to take care of. You're so great, Marceline. Someone else would definitely find you and take care of you. As for me, I'd, uh, I don't know. Oh. While this gives us the first hint as to what his question would be, we would see the question of what he would do post Marceline answered in detail. Finn removes Simon from his structure by taking him on an impromptu quest, to which Simon practically at every point of it doesn't know what to do, because it's so foreign to him. During the first fight in which a seemingly innocent fishing task turns into battling a hellish aquatic beast, he cowers because there aren't battles like this in his normal routine. In the second fight, Simon had a set plan to appear bigger to scare away this bear, but when the plan went awry, he reverted back into cowering as again, he doesn't know what to do when the order is broken. Unlike Hunter, who had a lot of order in his life, Finn in this instance is very chaotic in the intensive manner that we'd come to know, and that allows for Simon to get a better taste for the direction he may end up seeking. We get a massive hint as to what is on his mind towards the end of his battle when contemplating everything that has happened. He sees a child struggling to get some type of fruit out of a tree and immediately tries to help, but when he sees that someone else is already helping her out, that is when we get the second hint. But the third and most important hint is cemented when he tries to call Marceline. I'm good. Works great. Uh, I made a little girl cry earlier today. Wait, what was that? Can you say it again? Louder? Uh, it's nothing. Everything's fine. Mar Simon! Pee-Bee's <laughs> arm is gumming up the machine! <laughs> Simon focuses on how he made the young girl at the exhibit cry. 
said break from his routine. The scene is very somber and calm, which is heavily contrasted against Marceline and PB's wildness. The soft guitar strums and pleasant females singing with the flowing nature and blue and green tones clash against the heavy metal and loud voices and red tones. It's clear the lack of having to take care of someone that he cares about represents the sense of chaos he's been seeking. The idea of shaping another person who seeks that order, but also offers you a sense of freedom. That's what leads him into even at the ridicule of this evil choose goose reconstructing this ritual that quote centered in on a totem of gold a powerful demon of discord with whom simon's girlfriend betty had merged in order to defeat him although he doesn't succeed at this he does gain cake who appears in his life presumably to give him something he'd been wanting for some time now if you haven't given fiona and cake a chance maybe you just weren't interested in adventure time growing up as a person who equally didn't grow up on the show these were a great pair of episodes to dive into without a lot of knowledge on the original show and i I feel like I've only really shown the tip of the iceberg. So, let's see where this ends up going.